Hi everybody. So as you know, we're working on heaters and I was asked a really interesting question. Could you make a heater out of your catalytic converter in your car? And the answer is, yes, you can. In fact, you can buy catalytic heaters already made up. They only have one tiny problem with them and that is they're hugely expensive. I was told that it can cost upwards of a thousand pounds to replace a stolen catalytic converter and the catalytic heaters I looked at, I found a really small one in the USA for $55 and I found quite a large one in the UK for £550. They are stupid money. The reason they're stupid money is because the catalyst they use is platinum and of course that has great value. That's why people are stealing it so that they can recycle the platinum. So it's a problem in making them stupidly expensive but they are there. Now, they work in the way that any catalyst works. A catalyst, remember, speeds up a reaction. It assists a reaction. And it does this because it brings things closer together. Now, burning a fuel is nothing more than oxidation, and you can oxidise stuff relatively easily. But in atomic terms, things are very far apart. We think of far apart as somewhere like Edinburgh or Los Angeles. In atomic terms, they're close the way we think, but in their own terms, very far apart. And energy is needed to bring them together. And of course, a catalyst does that. It brings things close together. And so it makes the reaction happen very, very much more easily. And you can have an oxidation, or if you like, burning reaction without a flame, which is exactly how a catalyst converter works. The platinum brings it together, lowers the activation energy, oxidizes it, gives out heat, but we don't get a flame. As I say, the problem with them is the difficulty in the price of the actual catalyst. If you want to buy one, they're expensive. If you want to convert your catalytic heater, unless you've been given one, then your catalytic converter is going to be expensive to buy as well. And of course, that made me think, are there alternatives? And I came across this. It's a defence document, uh, AD 463813, published in 1965 and declassified by a Russian, uh, Viktor Shikov. And it was done for the Defence Department in the USA. And here it outlines a cheap catalyst for specifically a catalytic heater. Now, before you get excited because that all sounds so good, and it does sound so good, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny problem with it. And the tiny, tiny, tiny problem is he uses this stuff. This is potassium dichromate. You get dichromates in various forms. There's an ammonium dichromate, for instance. And it was used extensively in photography until they discovered that it was a hideous carcinogen. So in this form, unless you handle it carefully, it's a cancer-forming agent. Now, I'm a chemist. Now, I'm a chemist of many years' experience, so I'm used to handling this kind of dangerous thing. Legislatively, around the world, this may be unviable. There are some places you can buy it, there are some places you can't buy it, equally with the ammonium dichromate version. So it can be difficult to get hold of. Here in Europe, we can buy it. Plenty of places where you can't actually do that, and you have to have a lot of experience to be able to handle something like this, and that is most unfortunate. In this form, it's a cancer-causing agent. We're going to heat it and turn it into the oxide, which is this stuff, chromium-3 oxide, which is a green powder. This stuff's completely and utterly harmless. They use this as paint pigment. Uh, they put it in glass and all kinds of things, because once it's in the oxide, it's extremely insoluble, and so it can't hurt you. While it's in this salt form, it's soluble, so it can get into you, and that's the problem with it. So once we make it into that, no problem at all. Because we have that, Big old problem. This stuff and this stuff is used in ethylene production today, incidentally. So it uses this stuff, which is a shame. It also uses uh, manganese dioxide, which you need a soluble salt. And it uses as cobalt oxide. So I've got manganese sulfide, cobalt nitrate and potassium dichromate. When we oxidise those, that is we heat them and drive off everything apart from the oxygen, these will form three oxides. The reason we need to do it soluble is we need them to be in intimate contact with each other and very small particle size. Now, the only other thing that we actually need to do this is a substrate to put it on. Quite common is something like this. This is a um, 
fibre blanket. It's a mineral wool rated to 1600 degrees centigrade, so you find that kind of stuff. In the paper, 1965, they recommend asbestos. <laughs> I guess they're using this stuff, why not asbestos as well? We kind of have to modify, so the mineral wool is quite frequently used, and of course what we're going to use is carbon foam, as uh, carbon felt. We're going to put it onto this carbon felt. So all I need to do is use, uh, there we go, cobalt, 27% of cobalt, 72% of dichromate, and 1% of manganese by weight. I need to mix them up and put them into solution. Okay, there it is. Now, incidentally, dichromates make brilliant batteries. The only reason we don't use them, because we're terrified of getting cancer. And I thought I ought to add this for all those safety sallies who are going to throw their arms up and go, what? Don't you know it's cancerous? How dare you recommend it? I do know it's cancerous, and I'm not recommending it. This is for education and information purposes only. You shouldn't be handling dichromates unless you're a chemist of great experience. Anyway, we dip that in and get it nice and wet with the solution that we've just made. And here we're cutting the salts onto the support, which in this case is our carbon fibre. Sorry, I said carbon fibre, I meant carbon felt. Now, according to Shikov, what you do is cook it for three to four hours at 400 degrees centigrade. We're going to torch it with a blowtorch. So, as you cook it, It'll dry and then go a orange, which was the original dichromate colour, and then it'll go a greenish colour because it becomes chromium oxide. So now on here, we have cobalt oxide, chromium oxide and manganese dioxide. So it's got to a perfectly safe state now. But you have to go through that unsafe state in order to get there, which is why I don't recommend it. However, to use it, all you actually do is douse it with some hydrocarbon fuel. So uh, petrol's used, diesel is used, I'm using paraffin. We douse it with a bit of paraffin and then we can set it alight. The flame will start until it gets up to temperature. Once it gets to about 400 degrees centigrade or so, the flame will die away and you're just left with the carbon and the reaction will continue and it will continue to give out heat. and we'll let that get up to temperature. So that lasted about 30 minutes. The carbon didn't fare very well. It sort of burnt away. I guess it's eating itself. So I would use mineral wool if I was going to make something like this. Now in the commercial products, what they use is basically a cooker element. They stick a cooker element in there to get it to the 400 or so degrees that it needs to get to. And then the fuel takes over. The fuel is usually piped in through the back and is very often a lightweight hydrocarbon. Of course, in engines, they get the heat from the uh, heat of the engine just from the exhaust. So I was asked the question, is it possible to make your own portable flameless heater? And the answer is yes. Um, it probably would be worth looking on Google Scholar to see if there were any other catalysts around there apart from the dichromate, but then the only other option is going to be platinum. But it is more than possible to make one of those flameless heaters should you wish. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.